And all you can't tell by looking at us, but he's a young, he's a little younger than me. <laughs> As a preacher. I'm the one that's got the gray hair. But uh, I want him to come up here and uh, I want him to testify real quick. And I want him, if you, we've got, we've got a prayer request for this. If you don't have one, let me know. I'll get you one before church is over. But uh, if you've got a prayer request, you know what the first thing we want to do? Is we want to, I love the singing. I love to play music. About as good as I like to eat, you know. But I love to hear preaching. Amen. Amen. But you know what? Neither one of them is what God called his house to be. Jesus said that this should be the house of prayer. So if we forget everything, don't forget praying. Amen. And we need to bear one another's burdens. I say this a lot. He says it is. This, this is why we have congregational prayer. Because it bear one another's burdens and so fulfill the law of Christ. You want to fulfill the law of Christ, bear, be willing to get up and under somebody. Help them. Yeah. Brother Richard, come up here. Lord. Thank you. Thank you. First of all, I say I love the Lord. Unworthy to even stand here uh, because of the old man. Uh, I can tell you about the old man, which I'm not that old man anymore, and I thank God for his grace and mercy. You know, it, it does my heart good. I can look back over the crowd and not mention no names, but I see people here that I, I used to get high with, and, it's, and now we're getting high with the Lord together. Amen. <laughs> That's all things that only God could do. I mean, I, I, and sure, some of these have testimonies as much or better than mine, but everybody's testimony testimonies important. And I heard a guy say one time, he said, I've never done drugs. I don't have a testimony. And I said, I wish I had yours. I wish I had your testimony. I wish I didn't have to go down that road that I, put, I chose to go down. But through that, it was a learning lesson, and I'm able to sympathize with people that's there now, you know, and God used you. What, what the devil meant for his good, God turned it around. And I would use it now, you know what I mean? So all the times of prison and all the times being a junkie and all the times just being a, a terrible person, I turn around now and say, now look what God does. See, it's something I couldn't do. I couldn't turn myself around. I couldn't pull that old needle out of my arm. I couldn't stop doing the things I was doing on my own. And I was raised in church all my life. I know the Lord. I was raised in church. And I took a rebellious spirit. When I become 18 year old, I thought, well, I'm going to do this on my own. I've been made to go to church all my life. I'm not going to go no more. And I went out into the world. And, and, and God called me to preach some about 30 years ago. And I went. I began to run. And, and after that time, I've been in, like I said, I've been in prison three times. Been in countless county jails from Grady County, Oklahoma to Georgia. Just running, just running from a calling. Wow. So if you're here tonight, I promise you've got a calling on your life. Everybody here is called to do something. Yes. Right. If you don't answer that call, you're going to be the most miserable person on the face of the earth. So if it ain't nothing but sweeping the church, right. it's just as important as, as anything else. Right. Everybody's got an important place. There's no big toes and little toes in God's eyes. Right. It takes us all to balance out. Everybody's right. just important. Right. There's no big eyes and little using outside of God. And I just thank God for His grace and mercy. Yes. And it brought me out of the pits of hell. And I look back at the old devil now and say, you lost. You lost. And there's nothing no greater than to see somebody that's, that's strung out and lost hope. And you can help lead them to show them a better way. Because see, sometimes when you're on that other side, you feel like all hope is gone. You just, you've lost yourself. You can't find yourself. And, and you just can't get a hold of yourself. And, you can't, you can't do this without Jesus Christ. You know, and I, and I would sit, I would sit nights and hold my son and cry and thank God he deserves better. And when, when the law got up in the door that last time, and I felt, you know, I always wanted a son. I thought, boy, I never, I never, I never I always wanted a boy. And I throw it away for my, for my, my selfish desires and wants. And, and what I seemed like was thrown it away when the law got me that last time. I thought I lost what I always wanted. But God had a plan. Yes. But God had a plan. Yes. Through that, at that time, that trip to prison, in that prison cell, five and nine cell, I said, God, if you let me out of this prison where there's slaughtered people every day down here at Trousdale, I'll answer the call. I'll go back. You know, and I thought, I, don't, I thought, well, I don't want to go back to Sparta. 
where I'd been, you know, so bad at all. And so uh, I got a call from Life Changers up around Knoxville, and they wanted me to come up there. They sent me a letter. I thought, well, that's it. And God said, no, I want you to go back to Nineveh. I want you to go back where you yeah. was, what you was, and that way people could see you change yeah. what I'd done. Yeah. See, I could have went up there and told them people what I was and what I used to be, and it would just been a story. Yeah. But I come back home where I was, what I was, oh, and they yeah. said it changed, and they said, that's God. Yeah. That's what God was all about. Yeah. You've seen the unpardonable sin. You feel like that you've just been the worst of the worst. And you did. You just, but what it is, you've got to forgive yourself. Because right. see, if you forgive yourself, God's done forgave you. All you've got to do is just ask Him. That's what that precious blood that shed down that cross yeah. was for all those sins that you think is unforgivable. Yeah. Jesus loves you and He loves me. And he didn't, He's no respecter person. Right. So he pulled me out of the pits of hell and He'll... He'll pull you out of that state of depression. Yes, yes. He'll pull you out of that state of anxiety. Yes. He'll pull you out of that state of addiction. Then it ain't got to be drugs. Right. There's different types of addictions. Right. People's right. addicted to cell phones. Yes. People's addicted to TV. Mm -hmm. yeah. People's addicted to anything. Yeah. It don't have to be drugs. A lot of times when you're addiction, we think drugs. Yeah. There's more addictions out there right. than just drugs. Yeah. You can have, you know, he said put nobody before. And that means you're cheering the children, your mom and dad or nobody. He's got to be number one. That's right. He said, you know, when you... When you put him number one, he adds all those other things to him. Mm -hmm. So God, our God is in a rest, restore, restoring business. Yes. He's in a business of restoration. Yes. So what, for what the, the, the canker worms and stuff try to take away, God will bring it back and you have twice yes. in the night, twice in the night. Yes. But it's your choice. You have to make that choice. Yes. You have to step out. Step out in faith. Yes. So if you're here tonight, I'm, I'm, I'm a walking testimony that God answers prayers. Yes. And so if you've got children that's out there, I've got children. We've all got children that would just seem like I know my mom and dad has cried a many a tear and I would get back to church, I'd get out of prison, I'd get in church for a little while and I'd be out. And you know, we see that going on today with their yeah. kids. Well, well, they'll be in church and I've got a daughter, I thought, man, I'd hear a while back with us in church and it goes right back. And I see what my parents went through now. Yeah. I see, you know, I used to hear them say, you know, I, I, I wait, when I would come in, they'd say, you're home. We'd lay the wake of me in the night waiting to hear that phone call. That it's overdosed or something's happened. I didn't understand it at the time until I had kids. Yes, yes. And now I know, waiting on that phone call. Yeah. You know, have they got too much dope? Have they had a bad accident? Yeah. So it, 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 when it's you, when it comes home, it's much a different thing. But, right. but we got to be as concerned about each other's children as yes, I am. Right. 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 I've got to pray for your kids just like right. you're good right. We've got to love each other like we love right. Right. Yeah. And we have that love. He said we can have all them other gifts. But if you don't have that love, then you have right. nothing. It's all in vain. So if you're here tonight and you've got a prayer, or you've got a lost loved one, or if you've got somebody that, that you feel like is just, just, just not hanging out there. Our God, He said He came, He came to Isaiah to a prophecy that He would come as a tender plant out of dry ground. And I believe He done that on purpose. You know, I was in dry ground. I, I couldn't fertilize, I wouldn't fertilize. But when He watered me with that blood, then I forth, came forth fruit. So if you've got those out there you feel like it's in dry ground, I've got lots working in dry ground. Yeah. All we got to do is say, well, what can I do? Fast and pray. Yeah. Can you pass up one meal for that loved one? Yeah. Can you push back that phone one time yeah. for that loved one? Yeah. Can you push back something that you really desire? Do you love them that much that you can put it aside yeah. and pray? Yeah. And once I promise you, once you pray, prayers will be answered. Yeah. A lot of times we don't see them answered. We might not see them in our lifetime. But if you'll plant the seed, he'll do. He'll take care of the rest. We don't. God don't need no help. He, he don't need no help from me and you. He's an Almighty God. Amen. But He does want you to plant that seed. Plant that seed of prayer and fasting. So everybody have your prayer request tonight. Pray for our honor list. We've got Lloyd Dunn. He's had a lot of surgery. He's got a lot of pain. He's had a lot of pain. He's got a lot of pain. Good man. Linda Judd Fox. They've got her own hospital. She's my age. And uh, there's a lot of there's a lot of sickness, but I have an untold number of unspoken requests. And only God knows what I have needed. Yeah. Amen. Unspoken. Bring your family home, Brian. Yes. Yes. He just passed away. Yeah. He's been around a long time. Yeah. Yes. church was for many years. We're great. Boy, you're a good work. You're a good man. Especially remember Sister Peggy Cole. She had a surgery on her back. She had room good for two days. And then, uh, it's supposed to be one of them surgeries that 
better she was for about two days, and then she got worse than she was before she had the surgery. So we, we, we believe in God for a miracle healing in her body. Amen. Uh, I don't know. Well, no, so my, my cousin Eric Mayfield, which y'all pray for him many times, had COVID and didn't, had died three or four times, and God brought him back and, and healed him. You were walking back to the doctor off of him, and his own doctors even said, you know, they, they told him in a couple of years they'd start weaning him off. And, he went back into the doctor after we had a tip revival up for one night the right before we got to us. He jerked the oxygen off and went to his doctor and they sent him come in and they rushed back there and wanted to know why you got this oxygen on. And he said, and he started telling them about Jesus. God had healed him. But his, his grandmother had a heart attack Friday. And he was pretty upset. She was raising Carolyn Young. And uh, we got to have prayer with her and she went in for tests today and, and down in Murfreesboro and they said there wasn't some, just a few small blockages. And everything looks like it's going to be all right. So God is continuing. He's still in the healing business. Y'all. He's still in the healing business. Just like the brother preached last night. Faith. You know, if you ain't got the faith that God's going to do it, don't bother even praying about it. Don't waste your time. Don't go through the motions. If you can't walk it, don't talk. You know what I'm saying? If you don't believe God's going to do it, don't get up here and put on the front and say, well, I'm going to pray for you for healing. And then when he does, like you said, well, they really did. Well, if you didn't believe it to begin with, I don't want you praying for me. So. Oh, it, 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 it will burn. Stands God, help leadership to be put in the right position, God, that 
that can be done, what you said would be done. A lot of times we question you, Father God, but our human side has a tendency to question why these children keep going back and forth. Why, why certain people heal and certain people ain't. But God, let us realize that you have a plan. Let us see things through your eyes, Father God, that you see it. God, have you heard each and every request here tonight, Lord? Lord, you know the unspoken request, God. Lord, you hear the, the request for healings, Lord Jesus. We thank you for the healings you've done in the past. And we're standing on this, Father God, that you're no respecter of person. God, we come against cancer tonight, anyone with cancer. Father God, we come against them. We plead the blood of Jesus, Lord. Lord, we come against depression here tonight. Anyone battling depression, anxiety, Father God. We come against that in the name of Jesus. God, we thank you, God, for the opportunity to come to your house to be fed of your word. We pray, God, that you'll cover the evangelists here tonight with your blood and hiding behind the cross, Father God. Let us be receptive of what you have to give us tonight, Father God. Let us leave not like we came in Jesus' name, God. And we thank you. And Holy Ghost, you're welcome in this house. We know you're a gentleman. If you do not go where you ain't wanted, God, we pray that we usher you back in, into the Pentecostal services, Father God. Where you used to walk in a Pentecostal church and you could feel the power of God. God, we pray, God, that this feeling come back. That this spirit flows in us again. That we can be alive. We can be a separate chosen people, Father God, in these last days. God, we're looking toward the eastern skies. Looking forward to you to come. Take us home, Father God. But while we carry here, let us be found doing your work, Father God, and I'll always be in your will. And we'll care for you to praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Yeah. 
But I've been wrong business. <laughs> and he had to pay fifteen hundred something dollars just to get back on the road again. And that was kind of expensive. You know what? You know what God provides that? And you, but you know how he does it? He does it by people like me and you. Yeah. 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 Go from one place to the next. Yeah. And you when when you give, you are part of that ministry. Why? Yes. You're taking, you know what? You get, if the prophet gets a drink, you get a drink too. You know what I mean? So whenever God begins to bless that ministry, and it, 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 it you talk about trickle down in economics, they just talk about, I mean, it'll, it'll just pour out of your belly rivers of living water that continually flow. So you, you can't go wrong. We don't beg money here. You get whatever you can with with a with a glad heart, you give it gladly, or just keep it in your pocket. But you know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna get everything God gives me. That's the one thing God said that I he said you just just test it. I'll pour I'll pour your blessings out of heaven to a winner. That you can't even contain. So if you can't give, listen, pray and say, God, make me to where I can. But if you can and you want to, do it tonight. Help this, help this ministry. Brother, this is the Apostle James of the Old Country Church. I said, see, the Apostle of the Old Country Church. Apostle James. They can look in the Bible. But I want him to pray over our offering. Sometimes I get carried away. But I thank God for this time. Amen. This is the time you give to the Lord. Amen. And when your trials come and, and you have troubles with finances, God looks down and goes, I saw them give their money. And I got a blessing I have to give them. Hallelujah. Amen. So, you know what? I tried God once, and I never stopped since. Glory to God. Amen. Amen. He blessed me so much. It's still going. Hallelujah. Father God, we come before you right now. And we praise you. And we thank you for this time. I ask you to bless everyone that gives. I want you to bless everyone that can't give. So when they come next time, they'll have something to give in the offering for your workers, God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We all try to forget the things that hurt the most. It's so real, the fiery trial so close. But I'm here to let you know, you can make it through.
away Not a soul in this world Seems to understand
do this real quick. It's, 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 just a, it's just like a little praise song that we do at our church, the ones that come. But I feel like we need to do it because um, what I feel uh, is that there's a, a, some oppression. You know what I'm saying? And Jesus is the one that can take care of that. Hallelujah. He can take care of it. So I feel like singing this. Welcome, Holy Spirit. Hallelujah, hallelujah, God, I'm going to teach you, Jesus. Shut your eyes. I'm going to push you.
always up praying. And God spoke to her one night and said, uh, just go to bed. And when she went to bed, one by one, we each started coming in. Amen. Amen. And I thank God for that. Thank God for salvation. Amen. God has blessed me, blessed the, bless my life. Amen. I was, I was just like a lot, you know, a lot of others. Amen. I wouldn't fit to be saved, but God seen something in me. Amen. And I thank God for salvation. Thank God I got a new name. Hallelujah. I am so glad that old things have passed away. Oh, yes. I know that the Lord's given me an opportunity. I've been pastoring for around 30, a little over 30 years. Amen. And I tell you, it's just been a, it's been a wonderful journey. Amen. It has its ups and downs, but I tell you, it's better. I have more good days than bad. Amen. I mean, and I thank God. Amen. And thank God for Brother Nathan Hawkins. Amen. For the old country church. Amen. What a blessing he is. Amen. Hallelujah. It's good to be here tonight. Next to the old country church, where God leads is my favorite church. Did you tell everybody I said that? I ain't, got, I don't, I ain't ashamed of it. Amen. If something happened to ever run me off from here, brother, I'm coming your way. All right. Amen. Run him off. <laughs> Praise the Lord. I, I tell you what, I, I really do. This is our sister church, in my opinion. And that, and, and you can't, you, you got to be careful about that nowadays. Because you can't tell. Boy. I mean, boy, but now I tell you what. This church right here, what that church stands for. Amen. They believe just exactly the way we believe. Come on, brother. Come on. Yes. They worship like we do. Uh, I just, I'm glad we still got some people that holding on yeah. to the old time. Yeah. Young girls free. Come on. Yeah. And believe it. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Come on. I'm gonna turn it right now over to one of the best evangelists that this country has ever seen all through this year. And we had some evangelists here. Amen. But I tell you, ain't none no better than this right here. I want to Brother Bobby Bryant. Praise the Lord. The Spirit of the Lord is in this place tonight. Say amen. amen. Thank you where God leads folks for coming and being a blessing to us tonight. Give them a good hand. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you so very much. How many is glad you're here tonight? Say amen. amen. How many are ready to be here than to be in the hospital? Say amen. amen. How many are ready to be here than to be in jail or prison? Say amen. amen. David said, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. And how good it is to be with folks of like precious faith. Somebody asked me one time, said, well, what do you get out of serving the Lord anyhow? I said, the retirement plan is out of this world. Somebody say amen. One young man came into a service like this and got saved and gave his heart to God. And he was walking down the street the next day and he ran into one of his buddies. And he said to his buddy, he said, I got saved last night. And the man said, what? He said, I got saved. He said, got saved from what? He said, I gave my heart to Jesus. And the man said to him, he said, well, how do you know you got saved? He said, did you see anything? He said, no. He said, I didn't see anything. He said, did you hear anything? Well, no. He said, I didn't hear anything. He did, did you taste something? No. He said, did you smell anything? No. He said, well, there's four chances out of five you never got saved. And he thought for just a moment, he looked up at his buddy and he said, say, man, have you ever been sick before? He said, of course I've been sick. He said, how do you know you were sick? He said, did you see anything? <laughs> did you hear anything, smell anything, taste anything? He said, no. He said, there's four tests out of five you ain't never been sick before. Somebody shout hallelujah. Thank God I'm saved and I know that I'm saved and I'm on my way to heaven. Said a while ago, how many remembers when you 
got saved, I was there when it happened. And I guess I ought to know. You ought to know somebody say amen. amen. I went down and I gave my heart to the Lord and got up and sat down in the front row. And as soon as I sat down in the front row, the devil said to me, he said, you didn't get saved tonight. I said, I didn't. He said, no. I said, well, thank you, devil. And I went back down and I prayed to the Lord. slain in the spirit and received the baptism of the Holy Ghost with the evidence of speaking in other tongues. And when I come to him, I said, I said, devil, you should have left well enough alone. I said, I was better off you the first time. You told me I didn't get saved. Now I've got the Holy Ghost. And the Bible said that you shall receive power after God the Holy Ghost has come on you. How many's got the Holy Ghost in there? Somebody get the Holy Ghost in your hand. And praise the Lord is going to do here tonight. Siberia, but I feel like I could preach on an iceberg. <laughs> Hallelujah. I feel like my feet's on Cape Canaveral and the Holy Ghost is about to push a button and I'm about to be raptured out of here and be caught up to meet the Lord in the air. <laughs> the only thing holding me down now is about 155 pounds and when I give into that I'm out of here. I'm gone. I'm going home to be with Jesus. I'm going to say goodbye world. Hello Jesus. Somebody shout years ago, when Jesse Duplantis, before he bought his own jet, or several jets, I don't know how many he's got now, he used to fly commercial. And my wife and I, we was in Los Angeles, been out there in a meeting, and we was flying back to Dallas, Texas, about 4 o'clock in the morning, we went down to LAX to get on the airplane, and just in front of me and my wife was Jesse Duplantis and his wife, Kathy. And when I saw it was Jesse Duplantis, I walked up to him and introduced myself and told him who I was. And I said, I've been in a meeting out here. He said, well, he'd been in a meeting with Kevin Copeland. And uh, I said, Brother Jesse, I said, with you on this plane and me on this plane, I'm sure it's not going to go down. And he looked at me and said, well, if it does, we're going to go up. Somebody shout hallelujah. One of these days, we're in a moment in the twinkling of an eye. We're going to be caught up to meet the Lord in the air. I'm going up, up, up to meet with Jesus. Somebody shout preach the other day on the radio and he said I preached so good he said I set myself a hundred dollars so <laughs> <laughs> hallelujah I'm trying that somebody shout amen you think God would bless me if I set myself a hundred dollars hallelujah when I was 17 years old I'd already been preaching since I was 13 and when I was 17 I held a revival in the church in Southern California and they'd already heard me preach many times down through the years, and they knew I was a live wire. <laughs> and so the pastor came to me and he said, Brother Bobby, we've got an old man that sits on the front row, and he goes to sleep in every service. No matter who's preaching, he always goes to sleep. But we've got confidence in you that he won't go to sleep while you're preaching. <laughs> And I thought, oh, Lord, I got a whole lot to live up to here. And I got up and I started to preach and I saw his head start nodding and his eyelids start getting heavy. And I got a little bit louder. And then he perked up for just a moment and then his old head went to bobbing down and his eyelids closed. And I thought, oh, Lord, he's about to take a siesta right in the middle of my message. And I said, Lord, you know they're counting on me. I can't let this man go to sleep. And so I jumped off the platform and I run down and I hollered in his ear. I said, Jesus! is coming. And he jumped up and said, where, where, where? <laughs> and then somebody said to me, he said, what do you want to go and lie to that old man for and tell him that Jesus is coming when he ain't? I said, yeah, but he is. Somebody said, hallelujah. He's coming back. And brother, I hope I'm driving by a cemetery when he does. And the graves pop open and the dead in Christ arise first. And we which are alive and remain to be cut together with him in the clouds the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. Somebody reach over and get your neighbor by the hand and say, it won't be long before Jesus comes and he's going to get us out of here. We're going to be caught up to meet him in the air. Somebody shout hallelujah. Oh, glory to God. Hallelujah. Woo. So I said, no, no, that's enough. I'll make a Presbyterian shout on as we talk in tongues and some of you holy rulers pay up on your back. Somebody shout hallelujah. Somebody give the Lord a hand clap. Everybody say you can give the Lord a good praise in this place tonight. Hallelujah. Come on, praise him. Praise him, praise him, praise him. You can't praise him. 
Please let us say amen. amen. And the Bible said in Genesis 6, eight, that Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Amen. Honey, how many believes it's about time that we pray through? And God's grace saves us. Somebody shout hallelujah. And the Bible said before the rains came, God told Noah to build an ark. And he delivered him and his family from the judgment that was about to fall. Oh, 
the back of a little donkey. That brother this time, he's going to come in the clouds of glory as King of Kings and Lord of Lords riding the back of a white horse. Somebody shout hallelujah. And when he does, Satan is going to have to get out on his knees. Fly away, oh glory. 
like this brother did. And then when he came home that night, he asked his wife, and I was sitting there, he said, how did the service go tonight? She said, it was terrible. He said, what happened? He said, Brother Brian got him some and I'll fly away. He said, he did. He come over to me and he said, I dare you to say I'll fly away in our church. I said, how come? He said, because we don't believe we're going to fly away. I said, well, don't worry about it, brother. You won't. <laughs> he said, we believe Jesus has already come back. And he's already said in his kingdom here on earth. And this is it. I said, brother, if this is heaven, I sure to ain't go to hell. Somebody said, hallelujah. If anything, this is more like hell. Somebody shout hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, I know he's coming back. How many knows he's coming back? Say amen. Brother Peter, I know you believe that he's coming back. I believe some of you folks know that he's coming back. Hallelujah. Get ready, get ready, get ready. He's coming. There's something in the air. There's a moving in the mulberry tree. Somebody shout he's coming. And I want to be ready when he does. If you're here tonight and you're not saved and you don't know for sure that you're saved and you know that your sins has been blotted out and blotted away and that God has come into your life, you need to come down here tonight and give your heart to God and say, Lord, I don't want to be left behind. I don't want to be left behind to tell the story that we missed the second coming of the Lord. I don't want to be left behind. One preacher got up and he told his congregation, he said, if the rapture takes place, I don't want you to come over here in my office and cry on my shoulder that you missed the rapture. That's not saying much for that preacher if he thought he's still going to be there and then come cry on his shoulder. Somebody shout. Hallelujah. I ain't going to be here with nobody to cry on my shoulder. Somebody shout hallelujah. When, I, when he comes in the clouds of glory, I'm going to be caught up to meet the Lord in the air. Somebody shout hallelujah. Everybody stand your feet, lift up your hands and give God a good praise in this house tonight. Thank you for what he's going to do in this service tonight in the remaining nights of this revival. Oh God, I thank you before this meeting comes to an end that these altars are going to be filled, that people are going to be saved, lives are going to be changed, and bodies are going to be transformed. Oh God, I thank you that the lost are going to come in and sinners are going to be converted and thy name is going to be glorified. Oh God, I thank you for an old-fashioned revival to break out in this church. Oh God, I thank you there'll be an outpouring in your spirit. Amen. That will visit this community and this neighborhood that will cause sinners to come to Christ in the name of Jesus. Oh God, I thank you right now. Oh, hallelujah. I thank you, Lord. I praise your name and I claim it done in Jesus' name tonight. If you're here tonight and you don't know Jesus, the altar's open. You come on down here and I'll pray with you and the saints of God will come and pray with you and you'll know that you know that you know that you know that when you leave this place, you know you're going to be ready to be caught up with the Lord in the clouds of glory when he comes and you won't be left behind to go through the tribulation period. Somebody shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you're here tonight and you need healing in your body, come on down. Amen. Praise the Lord, brother. Hallelujah. Come on down. The waters are troubled. All you got to do is come and step inside tonight and you can be healed by the power.